The focus of this episode is the film Don't Look Up. No, not that one. There are no killer comets or DiCaprio style panic attacks here. Just a good old fashioned J horror about a girly ghost with a deathly pale face and long black hair. It was directed by Hideo Nakata, kicking off his journey to becoming a J-horror legend. Though the film was not all that successful, the exposure was enough to get him recruited as director for 1998's The Ring, also known as Ringu. Don't Look Up is not as polished as that later classic, but it still delivers a hand for the frightening scenes and somewhat acts as a prototype for what was to come. Don't Look Up, also known by the direct translation, Ghost Actress, revolves around a haunted film production. An inexperienced director is trying his hardest to make his first movie succeed, and for a time, his wartime drama about two sisters appears to be on track. The cast and crew are happy, and there is a friendly atmosphere on set. However, some ungodly force has other plans. Whilst playing back some footage on Dress Like Your Favourite Breakfast Cereal Day, their work appears to have been interspliced with some creepy unknown shots. An unidentified actress is overshadowed by a creepy laughing woman. Even though they don't recognise the footage, The director knows that presence should not be there. The clip also shows a young boy climbing the stairs to an ominous dark attic before the image cuts out. The director naturally then falls headfirst into one of my favourite horror tropes. Protagonists becoming obsessed with spooky old media. Whether it is the audio logs from the Changeling, the reels from Sinister, or indeed the tape from the ring, this shit always pulls me in. After this discovery, weirder and weirder occurrences plague the production, as people keep sensing something sinister watching from up in the rafters. When you boil it down, this is a very simple film with a rather basic but gripping plot told in a relatively short 75 minutes. There is little in the way of characterization but it allows the focus to remain almost entirely on the central mystery and the resulting terror. You're not going to come away remembering the characters' names or anything, but you will be able to recall the way Don't Look Up made you feel. Hopefully. The atmosphere is unbroken from the opening dollhouse scene, featuring a soundtrack that is again simple but effective. The dread continues all the way through the mystery, until the fatal third act. Importantly, the ending never explodes with action or over-the-top melodrama like most modern ghost movies. Nakata knows, the quieter the ghost, the scarier the ghost. Having said that, the director has made his reservations about the film known. He is on record wishing that he hadn't revealed so much of the ghostly villain especially their face in the climax. Who were? Nakata learned from his mistake, and ensured that the ghost in the ring would instead be in need of a dire, dire trim. I agree with him to a point. The unknown will always be more terrifying, but that is not to say the apparition here is unable to produce a decent chill or two. Every J-horror of the 90s and early noughties was subjected to a Hollywood remake, for better or worse. Mainly for the worse. I just came to say hi, I'm your new neighbor. A girl in 1303 jumped off the balcony and died. Boy, that escalated quickly. 
Years after this trend's high point, the American remake of Don't Look Up released in 2009 to basically no fanfare. I have not seen the movie, so I can't really speak on it. I have, however, seen the trailer, and that is why I haven't watched the film. Oh well. The original Don't Look Up may be limited in scope and budget compared to the bigger names in J-Horror, but I would say it is essential viewing for fans of this subgenre. <laughs>